It's not easy being a middle child. Your older brother gets all the adulation and respect, and everyone gets all googly-eyed over your younger sibling. Worst case scenario, people forget that you even exist. Don't worry guys, as always, I'm here to talk about watches. Hi and welcome to Last Watch. If you're new to the channel, then please consider subscribing. Like this video and hit the notifications button. I'd hate for you to miss out on any of my future content. If I sound strange today, it's because I have a temporary crown in my mouth, leading to some over sibilance. My S's will be exaggerated. Back in March, I reviewed the Red Army watch from Mercure, a homage to a prototype that may have inspired the Seagull 1963. You can watch that review and learn a little more about Mercure by clicking the link at the top of your screen. The Red Army watch had been pretty much consigned to the history books and a Chinese museum before Mercure deemed fit to revive it. Today's watch follows a similar theme. This is the Saizen dive watch from Mercure, a homage to the Seiko 6105-8000. Now unless you're a Seiko aficionado, you're probably sat there thinking I'm confusing the Captain Willard with the 62 Mass. Let me explain. In 1965, Seiko released their first dive watch, the 6217-8000, better known to you by its nickname, the 62 Mass, which derived its moniker from its 62 prefix and the abbreviation of various letters from the words automatic and self-data. Five years later, in 1970, Seiko released the 6105-8110. That watch is famously known as the Captain Willard, courtesy of its cameo role on the wrist of Martin Sheen in the movie Apocalypse Now. Now, I will try not to get bogged down with too much detail here, but between those two iconic divers, Seiko also released in 1967 the 6215-7000, and the 6159-7000, both deemed as professional divers, but with a monocoque case design. A year later, in 1968, they replaced the legendary 62 Mass with the 6105-8000. The Cezanne is a homage to that watch. What I find striking and a little odd is that over recent years, Seiko have released a never-ending stream of reinterpretations at various price points to both the 62 Mass and the Captain Willard. The poor 6105-8000 has been completely overlooked and pretty much forgotten, which is strange for a watch that, due to its short production run, is highly sought after by Seiko files, whom I believe refer to it as the Slim Turtle. If that's not true, then I'm claiming that one as my own. Before I dive into the review, I should highlight that I'm a little unclear as to the correct pronunciation of this Chinese manufactured watch, so may swap between Mercure and Mercure, Saizen and Saizen. I'm happy to be corrected on both if you know better. The Saizen Diver has been sent to me free of charge, and although I'm not being paid by, or on any kickback from Mercure, under YouTube regulations, I have to make it clear that this is a sponsored video. Regardless, I will as always give a fair and impartial review. I'm not entirely sure how Mercure are measuring the alleged 40mm size N, but my calipers gauge the case diameter at 41.2mm. The bezel diameter comes somewhat closer at 39.8mm. The lug to lug is an accommodating 48mm. The lug width is bang on 20mm wide. The case thickness is 12.6mm. The weight on the President style bracelet minus 5 minuscule links to fit my 7 inch wrist is just over 112 grams. Quite a lightweight affair. The case of the 6105 8000 is pretty much an old stainless steel oval in shape with a no-nonsense, slightly arced slab profile, perfectly suited to bond with the average wrist. There is little to break up its design, apart from its well-defined, sharply cut lug opening, and the addition of a semi-guarded, anti-snag screw-down crown 
at the four o'clock position. You can clearly see why it picked up the Slim Turtle name, as it's no doubt paved the way for the many turtles that would follow. It has a coarse radial brushing on the top of the case and has been well polished on its sides and between the lugs, clearly visible courtesy of the ill-fitting straight end links on the supplied bracelet, which we will get to shortly. The crown is nicely knurled, a pleasure to use and unlike an affordable Seiko, it's been signed with a Cezen logo. The coin edge bezel sits quite proud on a pedestal that elevates it above the case. It turns unidirectionally and quite smoothly through 120 clicks, 60 more than the original Seiko. There's no back play, but much like the brand that this diver pays homage to, it's slightly misaligned. Mercure have opted for an aluminium insert over a modern ceramic on the grounds of vintage aesthetic, and I have a mind to believe them as they went out of their way to install a sapphire coated loom pip in the inverted triangle at the 12 o'clock position. They claim a ceramic bezel would have been cheaper to produce. The remainder of the bezel shows the 50 minute markers. The sapphire crystal at first glance appears quite flat, but on closer inspection reveals itself to have the subtlest of domes. It has a chamfered ridge which gives it a jewel-like quality. There doesn't appear to be any anti-reflective coating. The dial is a deep matte black, complemented by a black rehort. There's a crisp white printed chapter ring framing the applied hour markers. The markers have a polished silver edge and are filled with white C3 loom. There's also a silver frame date window at the three o'clock, which has black Arabics on a white date wheel. The numbers appear to sit quite snug and a little high in their window. The size and brand name is printed white just below the 12 o'clock position. If you squint or give it a casual glance, you might convince yourself that it says Seiko. There are two lines of printed text above the six o'clock position, denoting that the watch is an automatic and waterproof to 150 meters. The bulk of this text is white, with the exception of the 150 meters, which is red. The text is well balanced, maybe a little small, but sits well on a very clean and easy to read, no nonsense dial. It's also worth mentioning that size N has advertised this as a 200 meter diver, but labeled it with only 150 meters. Mercure would argue that the 150 keeps its appearance closer to that of the original Seiko dial. The handset is extremely well done for such an affordable watch. The baton hour and minute hands are described as diamond cut, giving them sharp edges. Their centers have a defined brushing, which contrasts with their polished chamfered edges. They are filled with C3 loom. The second hand is a long stick with the ever popular traffic light tip. Under macro, you can see a slight overspill of red paint on the loom tip. The tiniest of quality control issues, which is offset by the fact that the central pinion has been capped with a sandblasted and polished disc, a rarity on most watches. I'll throw in a loom shot here, comparing it to a full fat turtle. The Cezanne Diver is on the left. On the right is my Seiko Save the Ocean reference SRPC 91. The STO is a clear winner. The rear of the watch has a screw down case back engraved with a ball design of a scuba diver swimming amongst the waves. There's some engraved text with the Cezanne name, its automatic movement, its stainless steel construction, and its questionable boast of it being a pro diver. I say questionable because there's nothing on the watch to back up those credentials, and although I trust the case is safe to swim with, I doubt that size N have thoroughly and rigorously tested their homage. Apologies if that's not the case. The caliber that powers the Slim Turtle is the Seiko NH35. Interestingly, Mercure's website shows the NH36. I don't plan to crack open the case to confirm this either way. Regardless, both movements offer the same specifications, a 3 hertz movement that hacks and hand winds and comes with a quick set date facility. The 36 offers an additional day display, which would be ghosted on this dial. The movement has 24 joules, ticks at 21,600 beats an hour and has a power reserve of 41 hours. 
it's rated for accuracy between minus 20 and plus 40 seconds per day. Mercure claimed that the movements in the size N are adjusted in-house. This particular watch would support that as it's running at around plus 2 seconds per day. Or maybe I've just been lucky. The Slim Turtle comes with a president style bracelet that has rolled steel attached straight end links. The links themselves, although very thin, appear to be solid. The outer links are brushed, whereas the central links are polished. The links start at 20mm wide at the lugs and taper to 16mm at the unsigned double push button brush clasp, which releases to show a pressed metal deployant. Interestingly and awkwardly, the bracelet seems to have been designed or installed in reverse, something my muscle memory couldn't deal with. I have since switched the bracelet around so that it opens as to what I would consider the correct way. The bracelet has push pins for adjustment and only two holes for micro adjustment. I have pretty much removed all the available links to fit my 7 inch wrist. Those with a smaller wrist will not be wearing this bracelet. Actually, unless you're a massive fan, I would seriously consider swapping this bracelet for something more fitting of your wrist and the watch. Yes, that was an intentional pun. The Cezanne Diver comes in a fantastic Kevlar style travel case, complete with a polishing cloth, a two year warranty, owner's manual, hang tags and a watch clad in plastic. As well as a standard black, it's also available with a green dial and a matching bezel all for the princely sum of $119.20, which is approximately 84 pounds or 98 euros. Mercure have given me a discount code, Last Watch, which will save you $20 off that purchase price. You can use that code on anything they sell across their site, and it will give you a $20 discount on anything between $100 and $199 or a $50 discount on anything over $200. Mercure may be a brand worth watching in the future, as they seem to have an abundance of affordable homages. They also currently have a Kickstarter campaign for their Pierre Paulin double tourbillon, which will cost well under $1,000. How is that even possible? Let me know if you'd like to see that one reviewed on the channel. For all of its little niggles, I think that Mercure have done an excellent job bringing to market yet another long lost watch. They have sympathetically made improvements to the original Seiko design without going overboard helping it to keep its vintage aesthetic. I'm lost as to why Seiko have overlooked this missing link from the glory days of their early divers. If you're a fan of the original 6105-8000 then buying the Cezanne Diver should be guilt free as Seiko seem to have neglected it from their archive and don't give you that option. If Seiko do eventually decide to make a modern reinterpretation, then you can bet your bottom dollar it will come with a price tag 10 times that of the size N. It's not all brainy points for the Mercure. The supply president style bracelet is woefully inadequate, a bit of an afterthought that actually detracts from a fairly decent homage. I'm usually a big fan of bracelets, but I will quite happily throw this one away. Luckily for me, I have something more suitable in my collection. Let me know what you think of the Cezanne Diver. Have Seiko missed a trick ignoring a pivotal piece, or does it not cut the mustard compared to its siblings? Is it acceptable to make a homage of an unobtainable watch? Do you think Seiko should consider a reissue and would you happily pay the premium to have one if they did? Feel free to share your thoughts on Mercure and let me know if you've bought any of their watches. I'll look forward to reading your comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all again after my next trip to the dentist.